So it's just told me that the meeting is being live streamed. That's always a good thing. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I just got a feeling that I thought I was sitting here doing nothing but doing loads at the same time. And I thought I'm giving a talk in a few weeks time. I think I'll take a few of the slides out and just share them with people to see if it helps. Because the techniques that I'm going to talk about have helped me considerably over the last 30 years to restore my sanity, or some might disagree with that, and to keep my feet generally firmly planted on the ground and also my head in a reasonably level state. Oh, that's what I think, you know, but so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go onto my Facebook doodah on the phone. And then I'm going to share some of these slides. So just bear with me. And let's see what's going on. So if I press that there. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button again, I think. <laughs> Clumsy I am. I'm clumsy. Yeah. I'm always breaking things. No, I don't know why that's not working. Just bear with me. There we are. Something's happening. Oh, yes, that looks good. Let's have a look. I'm, I'm supposed to have the fastest broadband available, and it doesn't seem to be very good, to be honest with you. I get better reception when I'm running with the phone in my hand. So anyway, I don't see that coming through yet. Um, and I'd like to. And I've got the cat jumping around in the background. She'll probably dive on my shoulders any second now. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Yes. How to manage time and energy from an open and flowing heart. That sounds good. I think I'll um, I think I'll listen to that. So I can see Amanda Summer. She's put something there. And let's have a go. Do, 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 do. We're probably all gone now, bored, waiting for it to happen, but the connection's very poor. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna sort of um, assume but this is actually happening live and I'll wait till my phone comes on, but I'm going to share my screen. There we are. And this is what I'm going to talk about is this is an I am connection live presents. Da, 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 da. The heart has its reasons of which reason knows nothing. And basically, I'm going to talk about this thing here. This is the symbol. It's called the caduceus, and it's the symbol of medicine. And most medics have got no idea what the symbolism means. But in actual fact, there's more hidden in here in plain sight than most people realize. So what I'm really going to talk about in this little sort of quick gap is ascension, something called ascension or evolutionary development where we move, these are two intertwined serpents or snakes that move up and as we grow, we ascend, if you like, into these new stages, and there are seven stages. And when you reach the seventh stage, you get your wings, you can fly off because then you're free then. You're detached from all the earth's cravings and longings and you're free then to choose from your core essential soul cells rather than being sort of automatically programmed to react to the environment like most of us are and i didn't know anything about these things it was really by i became very very ill and um you know i tried to do myself in because for after years and years of stress and anxiety and depression i just thought i can't carry on like this anymore everything seems pointless Everything seems meaningless. Even though I'm gritting my teeth and getting on with stuff, I don't seem to be able to just handle anything anymore. And what I've realized is that my search for knowledge was actually blocking me from what I needed to know. 
And I'll just throw a few sort of things in. But, uh, oh, it says on my video here, try again. Let me just try again. Comments will appear here. No, they won't. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I can't see your comments because some of you might have liked to ask things, but, oh, hang on. I'll have to decline that call as well. So it's all happening. So yeah, the, this really describes the sort of what I've learned, and I don't know everything, but what I've learned over the years is the more head knowledge I gained, the more it blocked me off from my heart. So this is intellect, and this is where intuition lays. And I know now that all the solutions to all my problems can be found if I reconnect here in the essential part of me, which is basically my soul self. So I'm going to sort of show the sort of neuroscience of what's going on. And the heart has its reasons, of which reason there is nothing. So logic doesn't come into this, really. Um, and I think what's going on at the moment is there's such a massive influx of information coming from all different sources that it's very, very difficult for people to take on board all the information, to process it, to remain calm with it all, and to make healthy choices. So I think I'm going to give a few tips on what I've learned. And as I say, I don't know everything. You know, feel free to chip in in the comments. Uh, with helpful suggestions but i know now that simply if i can learn to take a step back when i'm feeling overwhelmed or flustered take a step back ground myself and go to my heart center and breathe in a certain way that i'll discuss then things settle down and it's almost as if my intuition my inner teaching right helps me to make more healthy choices so there's no doubt about it. I feel that there's astronomical, meaning really big, astrological changes taking place in the heavens, which are impacting upon us in the earth, right? And I think it's knocking a lot of people off their feet. And what's been happening to me recently is I've been waking up with no feelings at all, almost in a void of feelinglessness, right? And I was a bit concerned about that initially, but what, with sitting down and sort of meditating on it, what I've realized is it's almost as if everything that ever had meaning for me that was picked up or, or acted upon through either fear or pride, all those old programs and conditions are almost like being washed away from me and leaving me, if you like, with what's called a tabla rasa, a blank sheet for me to create a new life coming from a different motivation. That's how I see it now. So if anybody else is feeling that sort of devoid in the void, right, I feel that it's a very positive thing. So please don't let your head talk you out of it and get depressed and stuff. I feel it's very, very, uh, it's a cleansing, if you like, or purgative process. Anyway, I do go on. So the heart, <laughs> the heart has its reasons, of which reasons knows nothing. And what a fantastic bit of kit, isn't it? You know, but you can see that it's almost like spiraling rather than just pumping up and down. There's almost a spiral effect, you know, and that's because it generates, if you like, a toroidal field, you know, a field of electromagnetic or actually it's a magnetoelectric effect where it generates a magnetism that sends information back to our head. Right. And most this is who I am anyway. I'll, I'll quickly whiz through this, but. I've got a bit of a PhD there. And what I was looking at is how what goes on between our ears, how it directly impacts upon the way that our heart works. And over time, I've found that we can change the way our heart works to change the way our head works to make better choices. As simple as that. And it really is simple. So rather than looking all the way out for answers, we can just, it's under our nose and our nose k-n-o-w-s it's underneath that or beyond our intellect and deep into intuition i hope this is making some sort of sense and by all means you know say if it's not in the comments so i can refine it you know to try and get the message across in a, in a better way for more people so um i've got some qualifications in science um 
I'm a member of the International Society of Autonomic Neuroscience, which is basically about programming and how the uh, brain and the spinal cord and the autonomic nervous system, how they hold patterns based upon what's happened to us in the past. So that's that's something for another day. And I'm a member of the Physiological Society, which is one of the oldest scientific societies. So I've got some credential. And my sort of fame came, if you like, a long time ago, when I discovered simply that the way that we breathe and how quickly we breathe determines the way that your heart works. And you can see here that at 12 breaths per minute, this hump really is a, a, an indication of heart power and flexibility. So it's an empowerment sort of indicator. And if you slow your breathing down to nice, big, slow, deep, deep breaths at nine breaths per minute, you can see that the hump increases but then the magic happens at around six breaths per minute because what actually happens is there's two sides of what's called our autonomic nervous system and they're normally knocking hell out of each other you know they're in something called an um, accentuated antagonism where they can't make a decision but at six breaths per minute it's almost like a sacred union or a or a sacred marriage happens where they agree to get on with one another and they go into what's called coherence then. And then the power of the two of them then is combined to go forward. And it actually creates a third energy. You know, it's almost like a corridor, as Amanda Lawrence would say, or a column. I see it as a column that moves up and down through the body in a sort of spiraling direction. So, yep. The way we breathe and the quality of our breathing, because, I mean, you can breathe at six breaths per minute when you're angry and still get some effect. But if you actually breathe a feeling of kindness and consideration and love and compassion, you know, with all those like soppy, sloppy things, if you breathe that feeling in, it sends really positive vibrations back to your brain, which causes your brain to settle down, expand and you can see things much more clearly. So rather than the head being in charge and suppressing and repressing all the information, the heart comes back online, the soul speaks, if you like, and provides us with the individual intelligence that we need to navigate our way through this life. That's the way I see it. It might be nonsense, but you might have a different way of looking at it. So anyway, um, this is what it is. Uh, this looks very technical, but the way that the heart beats at the end here is indicative of all these signals and information that's coming in through the brain and the spinal cord. And this is the part, this is the autonomic nervous system. Now, there's two branches to the autonomic nervous system. One's a brake and one's an accelerator. And what we see into is the brake has been associated with the feminine and the accelerator with the masculine. And it seems for eons of time that the masculine's been in charge Everything's been a rush. Everything's been forceful. Everything's been shallow, if you like. Um, and I'm talking, I'm not talking male, female here. I'm talking masculine characteristics and feminine characteristics. So what we really need is we need to reset and increase the tone of the parasympathetic nervous system. Now that's called at the heart, that's called the vagus nerve. And if you're interested in this, go and look up the polyvagal theory by Professor Stephen Porges. And he talks about the effect of love and socializing and actually giving rather than taking. So there's a rebalancing effect. And it's actually within the individual, it's shown in the pattern of the way that the heart beats. And why I can take this pattern, this is what I did in my PhD, thousands of these patterns, and we can do something called an autoregressive transformation on it, where we can go backwards and we can see what imp imp inputs or influences are actually causing the heart to beat in this way so i'll expect it you know so if we can then change the way that we breathe and understand that so we eventually get down to around about six breaths per minute in a relaxed state and we can change then our emotional state and breathe this feeling of lovingness, if you like, or intelligent kindness, whatever you want to call it if you think love's too soppy call it healthy vibrations whatever you know and so from there, then, we can then, rather than using things like cognitive behavioral therapy, where we use more thinking to try and change the way we behave, we can actually 
tune into the way the heart works through breathing and positive emotion, and we can send the information the other way around. So this is a sort of electromagnetic effect that goes this way, but this is now something called a magnetoelectric effect, where we send good vibrations back to the head. The head goes, oh, thank God for that. He's given me a bit of a rest. I'll just chill out here. And it's almost as if in that chill out, balanced, grounded, heart-centered place, we receive more information, we open up more, we get more and more information from all over the places, you know, and in yoga, they call that cosmic intelligence, you know, whatever you're into, you know, you can put your own words on this. And then what I've also learned is that I got into yoga, as I say, I was very ill, I was using a scientific approach to try and get better, and that wasn't the full picture. I'm not knocking science in any way, shape or form, if it's true and correct science, I'm not knocking that at all. But I also found that maybe three to 5,000 years ago, the yogi practitioners, the yogis knew about this, although they didn't know the words that we're using now. But they knew that by sitting quietly, by stretching, by sinking deep into relaxation, and breathing in a calm, gentle, deep way, almost allowing the breath to breathe us, they knew that they could actually open up all the energy centers, which relate to the nervous system, right? They can open them up and they call those, through that consciousness, they call those the chakras. And you can see on the left-hand side now, that's the first chakra, the root chakra, and that's associated, if you like, with the adrenal glands, because the root is all about standing firm, standing up for yourself so if the roots blocked you can feel insecure you feel a bit light light on your feet right and you sometimes can't put your point forward you know so these are all interesting things so that's associated with the adrenal glands the next chakra the um this is red orange yellow green blue indigo violet you can use colors to represent the different frequencies so we start off with the base frequencies which are low and then we ascend them into higher vibrations and good vibrations if you like so um the second chakra is to do with the sacral plexus you know uh, the first one's the pubo pubococcygeal plexus if you like uh, for anybody who's interested the next one's the sacral plexus which is to do with sex and the gonads so they're the sex organs as we move up then we come to the solar plexus right and that's associated with energy production and there the pancreas we have there and glucose metabolism and all those sorts of things the next one the beautiful one is called the heart chakra and this is associated with the thymus gland which is actually associated again with the seat of your immunity and your immune system. So anything that closes the heart down through fear and worry and anxiety, it can impact upon your immune status. And therefore you leave yourself open to all sorts of different diseases and illnesses and stuff like that. That could be relevant for the time that we find ourselves in. The next one, the blue one is the throat chakra. And this is associated with the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. Again, fear can actually cause the throat to constrict. And then we can't stand up for ourselves and we can't speak our own truth or sing our own song. So anything then that empowers this bit so that we can actually voice what we really feel and mean is something that's positive and will help us to go forward and ascend or evolve as a full human being. The next one is the um, associated, this is the, the brow chakra. And some people say it's associated with the pituitary gland. Some people feel it's the pineal gland. I personally think it's the uh, pituitary gland, but it doesn't matter. And the next one, which is becoming more and more important is the pineal gland. Now the pineal gland is the crown chakra. And it's also the seat of chronobiology, which is about time. It's all to do with the biorhythms of the body but it's also about tuning into the variations that are going around uh, with us environmentally as well. So the more that we can develop these chakras and allow them to be free to inform us, the more that we understand what it is to be a fully human being and also to ascend. You know, And the thing about ascension is I prefer to call it transension because we can ascend to a different and a higher vibration and therefore accrue more gifts and skills but we, we, we must transcend and include what's gone before. And sometimes what happens is, as you get more insight, if you like, and enlightenment, 
you can forget where you've come from. And I did that for, for a long time. You know, I was living on cloud nine, right? And I had my me, me feet firmly planted in the clouds <laughs> and was absolutely barking mad. I thought I'd been sent here as the only one to save the world and all that. But I've come out of that now and my feet are firmly planted in the mud. You know, so that's the relationship between the seven major spinal chakras, which are in the invisible dimensions, which medicine hasn't quite copped onto yet, but it is doing right. And the and the nervous system as well. Now, I, I don't know whether anybody can see this, but I'm just going to carry on anyway, because I do love the sound of my own voice, you know. And so this is basically how you can analyze the heart rhythm. Most people think that the heart beats very, very monotonously and very regularly. In actual fact, couldn't be further from the truth. Each beat has a tiny variation. So from one beat to the next, there'll be a very, very tiny variation. And that's called heart rate variability. And we can take a certain segment of this heart rate pattern and we can, as I say, go backwards and analyze it and we can get information of where the signals are coming from. So there's um, how that works. It's, these are called the R waves, you know, the peak as the heart beats and pushes out. And so if we take five minutes of data, we can see we've got all sorts of variability there, but it's all very, very jaggedly. So what we want is we want as much variability as possible but we want it to be coherent. We want it to be, it's a bit like when you're driving a car, a bit of gas or a bit of acceleration and a bit of brake as well. So it's using the accelerator and the brake very, very gently and harmoniously in order to bring a smooth ride in. And we can do that to our heart. And if the heart's beating harmoniously and it's not wearing out so quickly, we don't feel so stressed, tensed, irritable and all that sort of business. So that's that one. And if we do what's called a power distribution of that, we can see that the power is actually being dissipated in various areas. What we really need is we need that power to be more focused. And this is how you do it. So this is somebody breathing in a relaxed state at six breaths per minute. And you can see there that as they breathe in, the heart rate increases. And as they breathe out, it decreases. If you can actually practice this and sit for three 10 minute sessions a day, I know it's boring and your head will try and talk you out of it, but gently with your hand on your heart, just breathe in a nice, warm, gentle, loving feeling. Breathe in all the way in, two, three, four, five, stop. Out, two, three, four, five, stop. And just do that. Now your head will jump in. Oh God, this is terrible. This we've got better things to do. This particular technique, I can honestly say to you, has helped me to save my life and improve my life beyond my wildest dreams. Because I realized that I was able then to let go of what my mad head was telling me with all its stinking thinking, you know, very negative thinking. And I was able to find a different source of information or intelligence that was coming from deep within me, you know? And if you look at things like yoga, that can help you to settle into this or even Tai Chi and Qigong and exercises, because as you actually move and breathe that, bring the hands up, you can breathe in. And as you actually stroke down, you can breathe out as well, you know? So that's what that looks like. The power is all then centralized in one point. And that represents empowerment, true empowerment. And in that focus and undistracted state, everything appears clear. Now, I get moments of this real clarity much more often than I ever have done. And it's just by simply practicing this technique. So you can take it or leave it, chaps. This is I'm only talking about my story. So that's what I would say to you is just if you're feeling if your head's up, you, no, don't say that, Joe. If your head's battered, and you're knackered and you're tired all the time because this is also a way of not burning energy so foolishly and running around in a sort of manic state trying to get everything done because in that state we burn ourselves out with burnout repeated burnout comes trauma so we can become mentally unwell and that can be sort of recovered through this technique quite quickly and we can get a bit more sort of clear insight on what's going on. But if you actually keep yourself in that state, it can then become real mental ill health then and mental illness, you know, and that's actually what happened to me. So there we are. I'll just take this out now. And unfortunately, let me see. 
I don't know whether that's helpful. I don't even know whether anybody's seen this. I, I can't see. I'm just going to, for a couple of minutes, because I'll have to go in a minute and do some hoovering. Otherwise, I'll be in trouble. So just bear with me. And oh, there we are. Because I'll have to go. Oh, in a there minute. we are. It's working now. Comments will appear here. <laughs> oh, no, they won't. All right. Well, I hope that you've got something from that. I hope you've been able to see it. Um, as I say, the talk I'm giving is an hour long and I'll bring more sort of subtle things in. Now, I don't know whether I'm being guided here to do this more often, whether I'm being guided to actually set up some modules. I don't know. I'm not into all that sort of stuff, but maybe I'm being shown that, yes, it's about time, you know. So I do sense there may be a course on the way um, and that's maybe how I'll, I'll make a few shillings in the future you know to keep yourself going because i've retired generally from most of the stuff that i do now uh, and need something to keep me going so with that i'm going to love you and leave you and i hope that you've got something from this i can't unfortunately answer any messenger calls or anything like that i'm too busy with all sorts of other things that are going on in my personal life but um i'll try and do some more of these and um I'll see if it helps so may the force remain with you and just remember that the heart has its reasons of which reason knows nothing. And what you're looking for, based upon my experience and my understanding is, it's in here, not in there. On that note, Dr. Joe signing off. Bye-bye.